Hello everyone, this is the first beta major patch since release. Uh, it is a 1.1.0. So let's quickly go over what we're seeing here. And this will be a quick overview. So for single player, a ton of fixed crashes. Absolutely fantastic to see their bugs squashing a bunch of problems, which will help with the development of mods given that mods will have to not worry about the hundreds of crashes that this game does have. If you want to find out that your crash that you're experiencing is fixed, just read down here or visit yourself. For save and load optimizations, uh, optimize the save system to reduce total file size, minor improvements to save time and issues of old saves, localization, minor text files, and localization updates. And this is where we get to the content under art. We added some content here, added a horse trader to the Kazate town, 30 town uh, siege layer improvements, Vendia castle siege layer improvements, so a bunch of a siege layer improvements. Updated arena spectator characters, they are now normal agents instead of meshes, and they have new animations, improved various materials, added a new empire plate vest armor, added a new Kazate heavy armor, that's going to be interesting to see what this looks like and a bunch of fixes and scene fixes achievements more fixes audio fixes and missing voiceovers for Azurai, Kazate, and Sturgia for UI changes we have a party screen troop sorting now players can now sort both rosters and a party screen by troop type name count and tier which is really great for creating miniature parties uh, the last updated sort type is remembered by default, heroes are grouped together at the top of the roster. This change also includes a troop type rundown added to the party screen. Players can now see how many infantry, archers, cavalry, horse archers they have at a glance. Absolutely fantastic, so you can kind of get a bit more of a balanced feel. Implemented a fog of war feature for heroes. Players now need to meet heroes to unlock some of their critical information. Skills, traits, families, and own settlements information are hidden until you meet that hero. This change affects tooltips, portraits, information shown in the encyclopedia. I'm going to assume it's like kind of real life. You don't know what the enemy is doing unless you actually have information on them. This will be very interesting to see how this is implemented, assuming I'm thinking what it is. I added new tutorials to help new players. That's basics. Added a tooltip to the disabled leave kingdom button. Improved rotation in the character creation, added the ability to open the encyclopedia from the upgrade and recruit pop-ups in the party screen, added a new map event icon. So, so far, based off of the first few changes, they added a, uh, a few QOLs, a bunch of bug fixes, and not much in terms of actual additional content. There's a lot of fixes. Uh, for battles and sieges, we do have a lot of fixes. A lot of fixes across the board. Defender agents in most scenes would be too late to meet enemies attacking over ladders or towers due to their waiting position. But that does make sense. So there are some situations where I can get over the wall with ladders before the defense actually comes to the wall, which enables me to actually have a early entry to the walls, allowing me to win a lot faster than having to deal with my units getting killed coming up the ladder. So character development system, we'll see what they added here. At a new settlement near Legata named the Retreat, in which the player can approach the NPC, the Hermit, and decide to retire from their current campaign, either moving on with one of the heirs or concluding their journey completely. So they are adding an end game to the campaign map, which is great for those who have their goals in sight and want to end, it, end and finish up. Added a new window where players can see their progress through their campaign at the end of it, presenting many stats. So that does make sense. So if you're going to end the game on your own will, it's nice to have stats to back up to see what you have achieved, like how much gold you have achieved in under a year, or how many kills, or how much damage you've received. Change the description of the partners in the crime perk as it could be misleading. Perk overhaul. This is actually impressive. All perk descriptions have been rewritten to improve clarity. Some perks saw improvements to functionality, and some had minor tweaks and balance and clarity. Swift strike, fleet of foot, arrow deception, or arrow def uh, deflection, keep at bay, drills, merry men, well prepared, throwing com competitions, and so on. 15 perks saw name changes, trade trees saw bigger changes. We ordered some perk effects to take 
to make it where the early game benefiting perks can be unlocked earlier. Change the primary perk effect of the Silver Tongue perk. Cool descriptions have been rewritten and change how the effect type is shown on the perk description tooltip. Now let's move on to clan and party. Just a bunch of bug fixes and alley mechanics have been redesigned and re-implemented. From now on, players will be able to claim alleys after they clear one. They can do so by assigning a clan member who has suitable traits and roguery skills. So this sounds like that one mod I was using that um, focuses on crime. Now, when we get out of these alleys, that'll be interesting. Look to armies. Uh, a bunch of bug fixes here. The player army will now disband when there's no other party in the army except the player. That makes sense, so you can't just have a party yourself. Uh, renowned influence bonuses were rebalanced for multiple battle missions. Troop selection was added to keep battles. Uh, the village raid system has reworked. Instead of rewarding just through inventory and recruitment pool, uh, the village now raids primarily rely on the hearth damage done to that village during the raid. Rewards come in three categories, dinar, various everyday goods, and main production from the village. So it does give you an incentive to maybe raid more, but I still don't think it is good enough. The combined value of the loot is usually higher than the attacking caravans, but weight can be rather high, especially when raiding villages that produce low value, but high volume goods like hardwood and grain. Recovery time for villages has also increased, Forcing supplies and recruits now also based off village hearths. And after being forced to give supplies and recruits, a village will generate less loot through raiding for a while as villagers are alert. That makes sense. Uh, if a raid is comp completed successfully, it does not give a disorganized state anymore. You only become disorganized when you leave mid raid. So that is good if you want to do a quick run and gun or a drive by to small villages. For kingdoms and diplomacy, we get some bug fixes. Economy and trade, more bug fixes. Settlement actions, bug fixes. Wanderer life cycle was changed. Players can now find at least one of each wanderer type in the world at all times. Requests and issues, they added a bunch of fixes. Add exclamation marks to Spy Among Us and in and out. More bug fixes. Lord needs tutor. Quest success consequences are changed. Uh, criminal actions, escort. Merchant Caravan Quest. Caravan destroyed by main hero. Quest log text updated. Attacking Caravan consequences. Okay, 10 relation penalty, 10 power penalty, 80 honor experience. So just updating some of the current quests without actually adding anything new. Conversations, uh, obviously various improvements, conversations, and text fixes. For other Update the length stats of all mounts of highlighted characteristics and more bug fixes. Increase base settlement prisoner limit to 60 from 30 and so forth. Crowns were added to the starting rulers. Well, that's cool. So they have actual crowns. For multiplayer, there's a bunch of fixes, server networks, performance, UI fixes. And for both, more fixes, uh, optimizations, audio fixes, several performance improvements. Made better for both battles and campaign maps. I do like the fact that they are always constantly updating the performance for those who are on lower spec machines as well. Or those who want to run the game at a higher frame rate. Animation fixes, combat fixes, other fixes. And for those who are in the modern scenes, improved scene checker code. Editor side in order to detect various spawn path placement problems. Map camera implementation and a bunch of other fixes and changes. So that is for the 1.1.0 beta. It doesn't really add too much content, but a lot of bug fixes. So we're going to see how this plays out, whether mods will skip it or update to it. So stay tuned and enjoy.